Good day, Godot goobers. I've been working on my first ever video game in Godot with no experience with Godot or GB script, and it's been going pretty well. I'm super excited to show you the progress so far, so let's hop into it. Also, stay till the end for a couple of quick tips on how to render pixel art in Godot. So this game is a tower defense game, partially inspired by some flash games that I played growing up, as well as a mechanic from games like Age of Empires 2, which is the fog of war, where it hides certain parts of the map from outside of your view. And that was the general idea going into this was a tower defense game where you can't see all the enemies at all times. You have to like expand out the area you can see. Uh, haven't implemented that part yet, but that's what we're doing going into it. So first thing I needed to make was a simple tower. As you can see here, this is just a white square that I set up at first to be able to just shoot at my cursor, but then eventually set up to shoot at enemies. If we look at the script here, we can see that we get to set what it targets, whether it's the first enemy along the path, the last one, the strongest, or the weakest. We also can set its fire rate, uh, and then everything else is pretty much automatic. Once it is created, it starts looking for enemies in the area. Anytime that an enemy enters the area, it's added to the list then that list gets sorted depending on which of the four different targeting rules that we set. And then it just grabs the first one in the list after that, based on that sorting. Whenever it is built or whenever the map changes, it uses the update speed to determine what speed it needs to fire at, because as the map changes, it could be buffed or debuffed depending on what's going on underneath it on the tile map. So I needed something for it to shoot. So next thing I made was this bullet. And if we look at that real quick, it's just a simple little deal that I got from a sprite sheet off of Godot's documentation. You can see here it takes a few things and once it's created, it gets its starting position and we call initialize on it whenever it's created by the shooter tower down here, fire, and it's given a radius, an angle, and a speed. And those are applied to the bullet and make it fly. The range is basically to make sure that it doesn't just continue on endlessly. Some types of towers may actually have that depending on what they do, but this one will not. Okay, beyond that, it's just simple moving in the direction constantly until it is either not on screen or goes off the edge. Next thing that I needed was an enemy to shoot at. This is also from that same sprite sheet. It's just a little enemy looking dude. And they are built on a path follow 2D. And so all I have to do is stick them on the path that I want them to move along and they'll just continue on. And you see here we have a few different starting things, speed, power, health, uh, damage multiplier, which we'll talk about when we talk about the health tracker here in a second, and whether or not the damage or the health bar should show. And down here, once it's initialized, it gets a speed and it just moves along until it's hit by a bullet, in which case it takes damage. And then if it dies, the health tracker actually calls up to it and calls Q free which if you don't know is Godot speak for delete, basically. Speaking of the path, so this is pretty basic. As you can see, there's no actual path that gets created programmatically by the level, but once it is created, it's going to set up a timer for how frequently it needs to create enemies. And that is also controlled here with the speed. And then it just every cycle of that timer spawns a new enemy and sets its movement speed. Pretty simple. Let's talk about the cursor next. So this was one of the harder things to figure out initially. Basically this is the character. You are controlling this cursor to place towers around the map. If we click on here and hit play, it's got this little animation. This is not final at all, but I needed something to make it kind of stand out. And then if we look at the code again here, 
we see that we've got four different inputs for moving up, left, down, and right. When it's initialized, we make sure that it snaps to being centered on whatever square of the tile map it's on. And then we check for input. If it's a input that is fire, and in this case, I've got fire mapped to the E key, uh, then it will place a tower. All other inputs are processed to figure out what direction you're pressing, and then it processes moving you. If you hold it down, it will fire, or it'll move you one tile every six physics frames, which is roughly a tenth of a second. So it moves decently fast. Then we have, up here's the function for placing the tower. Basically it checks the tile it's on is a valid tile type to place on, and if so, it allows it to be placed. It also checks that you're not trying to stack towers on top of each other. That's pretty much it. The goal is right now, it just looks like a rectangle with a health bar. And that's basically all it is because I haven't done a lot of pixel art yet. But essentially all it is, is detecting if an enemy enters the area, calls to take damage on the health tracker based on the power of that enemy. And then if it dies, it gets Q free called on it. Let's look at the health tracker now. This is a little modular deal that I built up to basically be able to track health on anything. And what it does is it receives when initialized the object's health points, the damage multiplier, which is the amount to multiply the damage by, which seems kind of obvious, but basically if there's any kind of like environmental factor or anything like that that needs to be taken into consideration, then it's used here. Then we set whether or not to show the health bar, which is by default false, but we actually set it to true on the goal so you can easily see your health at all times. And then we also set up a starting HP and I'm working on getting this to work, the color, but uh, wasn't able to get it to work before this, so I just removed it so it doesn't throw any errors. Then when it takes damage, it adjusts the health points, changes the health bar value, and then it emits a change signal with the values of what it was before and what it is now. And then it also, if the health drops to zero, emits a death signal. And if the health moves all the way back up to its max value, then it emits the healthy signal, which I may change the name of. It feels weird just saying healthy. But those are useful for being able to control events that happen throughout the game when your different health levels change. So now we need a way to actually play the game. So we come over here and look at the level map. This is a pretty basic little path. The red are the starting points. The square in the middle is the goal. You've got your cursor here and it just works. So if we press play here, it's gonna look a little shrunk here, but we can place towers and they'll shoot the enemies and it's grand old time and it works. But let's kind of explain what's going on here. Our file here is actually loading the map from an image, which you can see right here. This is a 32 by 19 pixel array, meaning that it's actually creating a map that is 30 by 17 tiles, but that's not super important. For each pixel, it sets a different tile. As you can see here, we set up the list to hold all of those as well as holding a radius that we'll talk about later. Here's the image. It loads up the image and then begins parsing each pixel and assigning that coordinate to a specific list. Then those lists are used to populate the different layers of the tile map. The walls, which are the blue and later you'll see white, those are on tile map layer one. The black ones are on tile map layer zero because they're paths that it follows. So we want them technically quote unquote lower than the walls. And then the spawners and goal are also on the second layer. Then we called get paths. And what this is doing is actually taking our enemy paths that we talked about earlier and creating the points along the path. 
So it parses through each path point and figures out, okay, from this one, what's the next one in line? And it goes along and creates that. That way it's not just jumping around to random spots on the board. Then we have our newest steel, which is expand radius, which I've actually disabled and I'll turn on here in a second, which is going to control the fog of war effect. So if we hit play right now, it's just static. You've got the image basically of what you want your map to look like and that's it. Not super exciting. However, we come down here and we remove that, then we'll see that some very ugly effects come up on screen every few seconds. Right now, this doesn't look too great. However, the whites are the areas that will be in, or outside of the fog of war effect, and so are the roads. The roads are going to be the area outside of the fog of war effect that are paths that enemies can travel along. So, I hope that makes sense. As you can see, it just expands outward. The idea is eventually it will be tied to a secondary bar here that's like a power level. And then if you get damaged, that also goes down and shrinks the area. And any towers you might have noticed that are inside this area, let's run it again, they fire faster. So if I place one here, look how slow it is. And then as soon as one, you can see the speed difference. It doubles the speed. So that's what that update speed function on the towers was doing earlier. In my last stream, I also did some changes to visual effects and textures. So if we come over here, we can actually remove the sprite completely and see our new texture. This is a very preliminary design, just wanted to get something on the board that looks like a tower and does some basic stuff, but I actually added normal maps to these and diffuse maps and t specular maps. So when there's light, they're actually affected by the light. So if we come back over to goal, we're going to turn on this light that I turned off before. And then if we look at level map, now if we place a tower, as you can see, the base gets really washed out because it doesn't have any normal maps, so it's just treated like it's flat. But they even cast a shadow on the ground away from the light source, and it adjusts depending on the actual shape of the gun, which I think is a pretty cool start. Eventually, I want to have like sunlight kind of thing that casts long shadows. However, I'll have to code out a special shader for that because currently the Godot directional light is what they call it, casts an infinitely long shadow. And that's not what I want. I want set length to it. So I'll have to work on that. But this is the progress I have so far. I am super happy with it. And I'm super excited to see where this goes. Godot has been a blast to try and learn. It's just a little bit different than uh, Unity in the sense that the way you do things is very different. It's a little bit easier to handle like scenes and objects and stuff like that, which I, I really appreciate because I'm, I'm a programmer. I'm not a like visual designer or anything like that. So the programming side is really easy for me to pick up. And so I'm glad the rest of it is easy to pick up as well. So how did I get everything to have essentially pixel perfect display? Well, that is down here in our game scene. This looks pretty similar, but you notice the little edge was cut off. I've taken the level map, put it into a sub viewport within a viewport container, and that is making sure everything is pixel perfect, which is fantastic because it can be a really big pain to try and do stuff like this. That's that's a nice trick if you are trying to do pixel art and you can't get it to look right. Put it within a sub viewport, set it to the pixel size you need, and then you're going to scale it here on the sub viewport container. What that'll do is give you pixel perfect accuracy while having it on a larger screen so it doesn't get messed up. One thing to keep in mind, this exact way of doing it really only works with a static camera. 
If you have a moving camera, there's some videos out there to help you out with that. If I can find one, I'll tag it in the description, but I just have a static camera, so this was good enough for me. But all of them pretty much use this viewport system just with some extra code to make things a little smooth. And if you want pixel art within like your views, so if we look here, this is really crisp. The way you do that is you go to project, project settings, and you're going to go down to rendering, rendering textures, and you're going to change default texture filter to nearest. And the reason why you want to do that is if you leave it on, I think it defaults to linear. Look how fuzzy that is. But if we go back, change this back to nearest, close, it's all crisp. That way within not only the like game, but when you're working on it, you'll be able to see your crisp pixel art. Anyway, that'll do it. Why don't you check out this video right here about my software Streamlooper.